I love singing. I'm just full of melody. As soon as I was born, I began to sing. Father and mother went crazy about my singing. They used to stay up all night to listen to it. The neighbors used to stay up, too. They certainly were wild about my voice. You ought to hear them rave about me. Talk about Caruso getting 2500 a night. Why, the man who lived over us offered father a thousand dollars if he'd send me upstairs for five minutes. Everybody told father he ought to do something with my voice. Father used to be afraid to leave the house. There used to be such a crowd waiting to tell him what to do with it. One guy said cultivate it. Another said no, they ought to kill the nerve. Every morning when I started to sing, all the workmen used to lay off. They thought it was 12 o'clock. When I grew older, I never really wanted to sing. But father insisted on cultivating my voice. Most singing teachers use a tuning fork to get the pitch. But father had to be different, so he used a pitch fork to get the tune. The only trouble was, when I'd hit a high note, father would go two octaves lower with the pitch fork. I've just found out why I sing so much. Scientists have discovered that our brains are full of little cells that make us do things we don't want to do. One set of cells makes us sing. Another set of cells makes us talk, and so on. A doctor examined me last week, and he said, Young man, you should be a great singer. Your brain is just full of singing cells. I can't account for it. I says, I can account for it. I spent five years in a cell in Sing Sing. I tell you, science has discovered some things lately that will change the whole course of our lives. Science tells us that all our ills are caused by microbes, germs, or bacteria. And now they say we'll have to reform love. They tell us there are microbes in every hug and bacteria in every kiss. Can you imagine reforming love? Just picture the reformed lover calling on his reformed sweetheart. He sits on a sterilized sofa, gets her on his deodorized knees, gazes up into her germless eyes, and then he says, You may kiss me, dearie. I'm perfectly antiseptic. Then she says, Oh, you microbe killer. Then he says, How's your mother? And she says, Mother's away. She kissed father last night, and we had to send her to the cleaner. She won't be done until Thursday. The doctor told Mama she mustn't kiss Papa unless he sends his whiskers to the carpet beaters. Then he squeezes her and she says, Look out, dearie, you'll break my bacteria. Then he'll say, How's your little brother and your father? And she says, Brother kissed the nurse this morning and we're boiling him. And as for father, every time he has to kiss mother, he goes right out and gets sued. Imagine one of those reform lovers with a beard. Every time he kisses his girl, he has to throw a handful of chlor de lime in his whiskers, and after he's kissed her three or four times, <laughs> they look like a pair of lace curtains. If this microbe craze goes on, it'll be awful for the bartenders. Can you see a man coming into a saloon and saying, give me a shot for Una with some Listerine on the side? And can you see two old men come into a cafe, and one of them says, come on, kid, we'll split a quart of Lydia Pinkham's. The next thing you know, some poor married man will come home full of Omega oil and his wife will give him rough on wraps to straighten him up. I tell you, science is going too far. Now they're going to teach mental telepathy in the public schools. Mental telepathy. Suppose everybody understood that and could read each other's thoughts. Can you see a man with a homely wife taking her to see a musical comedy where they have pretty girls? Can you imagine her reading his thoughts? He'd get a wallop in the eye as soon as the chorus came on. Don't laugh, boys. Your wives may guess what you're thinking as it is. <laughs>